Today I want to talk about what you need to do before you start your training to make sure you're setting yourself up for success. So we're going to talk about how to scout out good locations to work on dog reactivity and to understand what your dog's threshold is and how to apply that to picking a good area to train. Here's a park demonstrating an ideal location to work with a reactive dog. Anyway, if you guys don't already follow me on Instagram, you might want to. I spend a lot of time each week on my stories um, covering a lot of this stuff, um, answering lots of questions and throwing out little bits and tips and busting myths and all sorts of little things and just nice uh, short little 15 second segments that you might want to check out. We're at the Hiker Pup on Instagram. So what makes a great training location? Ideally, what you're looking for is something that allows for whatever your dog's threshold is, that outside of that, you have good vision and room to move. You can see this park has very good vision. It's very open. There are multiple ways in and out. There's a greenway running along the backside. There are sidewalks coming up from the greenway over to the parking areas and the different picnic pavilions all through the park. So you have lots of entry and exit points and lots of big wide open spaces to be able to move in any direction if something surprises I want to you. I be able to be with my dog's threshold and I want to be able to see well beyond that so whenever my dog's triggers come into view I have time to work with things and I have good escape routes of how to get outside of that bubble. What you don't want to be is caught in, boxed in, having things popping inside of that threshold unexpectedly. So you really need to kind of take some different things into account when you're scouting those locations. On first presentation, this park may seem very similar. It's also on the greenway. It also has an open field. However, it's bordered between the parking lot and the greenway with big bushes, which you really can't see through. So you can't tell who's pulling in and what's getting out of the car. That always makes me a little nervous. And on the other side of the field is it's bordered by a creek. So I have no way to move out of this field except for coming across the greenway, which is likely going to be the source of traffic of the triggers. Both of these parks are on a greenway, so you have a steady flow of traffic, whether they're people on bicycles or walking dogs or people just coming to the parks to play with their kids or walk their dogs. So I like to show these two examples because one is a great location that can be a very successful place to work on a reactive dog and the other not so much. It's fine for advanced work, but in those initial stages, you really want to have a lot more room than this park provides. So why does that matter? Well the first thing is is that training reactive dogs it's stressful. It's stressful for both you and the dog when you're trying to sort this whole thing out. So you really want to make sure those first few times you, you go out you are setting yourself up and your dog up for the best success. You don't want to jump into an area that ends up being way too much without enough room for you to move and have all this stuff unexpectedly happen and really then have your spirits dampened by that experience. You want to <laughs> His nose is going crazy. As you can see, he's not excited about the idea that we're sitting here in the car when there's a walk waiting. Hold on, butters, we're about to go. So, what I'm avoiding until I'm way further down in my training are tight spaces, enclosed areas where there's no escape, you know, tight sidewalks with busy traffic and not a lot of yard to one side, not a lot of driveways you can go up where if someone's coming down the street towards you, you've got no way out and you're stuck there inside of the threshold for way too long. That's not a great spot to start your training. What else do I like? I really like a predictable flow of traffic. So having a greenway where you've kind of got people coming and going from both sides and then a park where people are uh, coming in but you can see the parking lot and you can see people arriving is a great spot to work because you can 
predict the way the, the traffic flow is and you can find yourself a spot where you can see all of that happening and it's not surprising you and sneaking up from behind you. If I'm going to a parking lot, I like to work around stores and stuff like that where you, you know people are getting out of their car, going in the building, coming out of the building, going into their car and you can be off to the sides and not have to be in the direct flow of that traffic. I also avoid areas where the loose dog situation is hard to predict or control. You know, the parks that I've shown in these examples, both of them are right next to busy roads. So people don't really take their dogs there to go off leash. They go to the enclosed dog park if they're gonna do that. Or if they do happen to do that there, because they are so close to the busy road, they tend to be pretty good dogs that don't come running over to us. I have very, very rarely in either one of these spots had loose dogs come running up to me. This park, bordered by a busy road with wide open spaces and good vision, is great to start with a very reactive dog to other dogs. Plus, the police station is right across the street, so you pretty much never have to worry about anyone breaking the leash laws, and you can guarantee that any dogs you see are going to be well leashed. And this park is also a very highly policed area, so another safe spot to not have to worry about loose dogs. So what a threshold for reactivity is, is that basically there is a distance where your dog's trigger comes into view. And if your dog is outside of the threshold, they see the trigger and notice the trigger, but they're not yet reacting. They're basically assessing the situation and deciding if they should. If they're inside the threshold, this means that no matter what you do, they're reacting. They're barking, they're lunging, they're doing whatever their thing is. And that at this stage, they don't care about your treats. They don't care the fact that you're yanking on their collar. They're barking and they don't care what you have to say about it. They're game so on. This place, this space between where your dog sees their trigger and where they start reacting. That's your sweet spot. That's where all your training takes place. And you can also do a little bit of training on the outside where your dog stops reacting and there that trigger's still in view, but the dog's keeping track of them to make sure they're leaving. You've got a little space in there that you can also train, but it's far more effective in that magic sweet spot before they actually start barking, lunging, and carrying on. So once your dog is inside of that threshold, your job is to try to get them as quickly as possible to the other side of that threshold to where the trigger's moving further away and the dog stops reacting but is simply watching and making sure they continue on their way. Once your dog is barking, lunging, carrying on and in a fully reactive state, you're no longer dealing with just behavior. At this point, you start to bring into it some real biological issues that are happening within the dog. Inside of their brain, you've got endorph endorphins that are releasing, stress ke chemicals, hormones, and all sorts of stuff that are kind of causing this surge to their thinking centers. And this is not a place where you're really gonna have a whole lot of breakthrough and helping them get through this situation in any kind of a reasonable way. So you just wanna get out of it as fast as you possibly can and the way you do that is by creating more space. So, my dog's threshold is the space where they react. The space where no matter what I do, whatever treat I have, no matter what I'm saying, they're going. In this state, until they stop reacting, you are dealing with biological, chemical brain responses that are happening that you cannot change. You can suppress it momentarily, but if you don't go in and change the behavior, the emotion as far as why that set off, you're just going to compound that issue for the next time if you add sphere and additional stress from you to the dog inside of that moment. So rather than doing that, just take the route of getting out of there. Move the dog away, get outside of that bubble as fast as you possibly can. Be neutral, but effective. Just move. Don't hesitate. 
just get out of there. Don't explain yourself to the person who your dog is barking at. Just get out of there. Don't try to be an ambassador and try to make them feel better about the fact that your dog is barking at them. Just get out of there.